My name is Keith Korsmeyer. I'm a professor of biology in the marine science program at Hawaii Pacific University, and we're here on the Hawaii Loa campus on the island of Oahu. I got into fish because of having aquariums as a kid, going to the ocean, and just got really interested in the diversity of fish that are out there. Part of the vertebrate group, the group that has backbones just like us, so they have some similarities to humans. There's such a huge diversity of fish species that are out there. So there's, of all the vertebrates, that is the animals with backbones, fish comprise about 50%, and there's about 30,000 different species of fish. Now sharks make up about 350 of those species. There's a lot of diversity out there. They're found in all kinds of different marine environments, freshwater environments, and they have all kinds of different adaptations to live in different parts of the world. Here in Hawaii, we're in the tropics, of course, we have coral reefs here, and in the near shore waters close by here, there's over 400 different species of fish. Well, the Hawaiian Islands are volcanic islands that arose from the volcanic activity of a hot spot, rose up, and we have these islands now as the volcanic activity has moved off underneath past the big island now. The reefs have built up around the islands, the coral reefs, and that provides this habitat for all of this diverse animal life, the fish and invertebrates that live there. Now in Hawaii, there's about 40 different species of shark that live in the Hawaiian waters, but most of those are offshore in deep water, so you're not likely to encounter them when you're in the swimming or surfing in the near shore waters. The species of shark that you're most likely to encounter on the North Shore or Near Shore in Hawaii are the uh, white tip reef shark, those are the most common, sandbar shark, scalloped hammerhead shark, and occasionally the tiger shark. The tiger shark, those are the ones that people are most afraid of. That's the one that feeds on things like sea turtles, seabirds, marine mammals. That's the shark that's probably the biggest one that people might encounter in near shore, getting up to 12, 15 feet. They're the ones that are more likely to be perhaps aggressive. Most of the encounters are very rare. Usually the shark is not targeting a surfer or a person that's in the water. It's an accident. There's usually, on average, maybe four or five shark bites in the Hawaiian Islands per year. If you consider how many people are actually in the water, that's a pretty low rate. The other four sharks that I mentioned, they're pretty docile. They're not aggressive. Again, if it was a, a bite that someone got, it would just be an accidental encounter. I think the best precaution about shark attacks is to always make sure when you're in the ocean to be with a buddy. Use the buddy system. That's what saves most people that do have these encounters. Someone gets bit, there's someone nearby that can help them get back to the shore quickly, apply pressure to the wounds, make sure that they get help. Dawn, dusk, and at night, those are the times when sharks are more active and, be, and feeding, so those can increase the chances. Some of the myths about sharks are that they're very aggressive, that they're attacking humans, but really the idea of a shark attack is kind of a misnomer. They're not seeking out to attack or go after humans. We're not part of their normal diet. Really it's a bite, usually accidental. Fatalities are extremely rare, but you've got an animal that has a mouth full of sharp teeth and that's what it uses to feel around its environment. Some of the other shark myths that I've heard are that sharks must continue to swim all the time in order to breathe. There are some pelagic sharks, that is some deep, uh, deep water, open ocean sharks that do swim all the time, like the great white sharks and mako sharks. And they swim all the time and push water over their gills by swimming forward through the water. But many sharks, in fact most sharks, are more than happy to be sitting on the bottom and they can pump water over their gills. You can see them moving their mouths and, and the gill slits opening and closing. And so they're perfectly happy sitting on the bottom. They don't suffocate if they stop swimming. They will sink though if they stop swimming. Sharks do have a very good sense of smell, so they are able to detect things like blood in the water in small concentrations. So that is a concern if you have an open wound or something that's bleeding, you probably shouldn't be out in the water. The myths that sharks can't see well. Many sharks have actually a very good sense of vision. So they can see well in their environment. They have the electroreceptive sense. They can detect the electric fields in their environment. And they use that to find prey, to find living animals. Mostly concentrated around the head and mouth and snout of the shark are a series of pores that each one is a, an electroreceptor. Allows them to detect these weak electric fields. And any living animal, including ourselves, when we contract our muscles, creates a weak electric field. And so sharks can sense that in prey fish or any other animal that they find in their environment. 
is the jaws and teeth of a mako shark, which is a close relative of the great white shark. But notice that the teeth on the mako shark are very long and slender because they're fish eaters. And so they use their teeth to grab on to the fish that they swallow whole. And the long pointy teeth make sure the fish don't get away. Uh, whereas a great white shark has the large triangular teeth. This would be from a great white that's maybe 12, 15 feet long. And that's because they're feeding usually on marine mammals that they bite chunks out of. And so this shape of tooth is very good for biting and cutting chunks of flesh out of the, out of the seal that they're feeding on. Uh, this is a fossil tooth uh, that uh, may be a closely related species. There's some debate called the megalodon. And these guys were up to 50 feet long. Fortunately for us, they went extinct about two million years ago. So we don't have to worry about encountering these 50 foot sharks uh, in the water. Uh, just the great whites that we have today. My name is Keith Korsmeyer, and you're watching the Surf Channel. Over that three decade period, we've seen more than 200 million pounds of trash picked up thanks to the efforts of 11 million volunteers.